Shipfaced, everybody, premiering season eight. I'm so thankful and honored to have been able to meet with Miss Susan Gibbs and talk about her grandfather's legacy. If you don't know, Susan Gibbs is the granddaughter of William Francis Gibbs, the chief naval architect in designing the SS United States. She's also the president of the Conservancy. If you're interested in donating and saving America's flagship, head to the link in my description. I'd like to remind my viewers, if you're interested in this lovely model of the SS United States and other incredible ships, head to the Etsy shop, the Roller 3D Model Company, for this and other ship models. SS United States was built between 1950 and 1951 in Newport News shipyards. By June 23rd, 1951, the ship was launched and christened by the wife of Texas Senator Tom Connolly, Lucille Connolly. Despite the 100 degree heat that day, thousands of spectators gathered for the amazing event. There was much excitement surrounding the SS United States. She was the biggest, she was the most revolutionary in her maritime propulsion system. Her design was kept top secret. There was a lot of mystery around the ship which drew a lot of interest in the culture. Weighing approximately 53,330 gross registered tons, she was 990 feet long, 101 feet wide, and 175 feet tall from the keel to the funnel. She also was the most powerful, with a steam power plant capable of producing a whopping 240,000 shaft horsepower. Designed with reds, whites, and blues, there was no doubt in anyone's mind that this was indeed an American ocean liner. Luxurious and refined, inside and out, she was beautiful. Beautiful, powerful, and bold, SS United States thoroughly represented America at peacetime, until finally the day came on July 3rd, 1952, when SS United States set sail on her maiden voyage. The Sail Away Band on the top deck was playing live music, drinks were served, and there was not a care in the world for a single person on board, other than, of course, would she take the Blue River Band? Here to talk about SS United States is the lovely Miss Susan Gibbs. 70 years ago, she smashed the transatlantic speed record on her maiden voyage using only two thirds of her power. It was a triumphal moment and it's remarkable that the ship is, is still proudly afloat. So we are excited to celebrate her accomplishment and also her, her resilience and the fact that she's still with us. For 70 years, she's been with us and we look forward to the next 70. Well, my grandfather, when he was eight years old, he was taken to a, a launch of a huge American ocean liner in Philadelphia when he was a little boy, so back in 1894. From that moment, seeing this extraordinary ship be launched, he later said that he dedicated his life to ships, and I remain inspired by that clarity that he had as, as, as a little kid. And then, of course, he was on the maiden voyage of the SS United States, although, interestingly, it was the only voyage that he ever took aboard, aboard the ship. Um, he certainly tended to the vessel from, from land. He called the ship every single day when the ship returned, from, returned to New York from her transatlantic crossings. He would literally get up at dawn and have his driver take him out to the Brooklyn Shore Parkway so he could see his ship return to him. Uh, and I, so I guess I'm saying that I remain inspired by just the passion and love and obsession he had for, for the ship really throughout his life. But sort of on that note too, I'm sure you've had the chance growing up to meet and speak with so many people 
who may have been passengers aboard SS United States. Would you be able to share some of the memories and stories that they captured the spirit of the ship with? Well, we could uh, speak for 10 hours <laughs> because <laughs> there are just so many. And that has been the great honor and pleasure of this work for me is, is the connections, the stories that I've heard from, from so many people, whether former crew members who would talk about their shenanigans actually, <laughs> uh, you know, from from a story that that some of the crew members stole Rita Hayworth's toilet seat from her stateroom, <laughs> and, you know, chopped it up and made souvenirs out of it, and uh, to stories of the the SS United States crew had a, a darts team that would take on the crew from the Queen Mary and the Queen Elizabeth. They had a baseball team, um, so and and. And then, of course, there there were the celebrities who who traveled aboard. Uh, one funny anecdote was that Milton Berle was on the ship's maiden voyage, and apparently he he said that uh, you know he hung out with the crew as well, and he he put on a little show. I think the second or third night when the ship was at sea on her maiden voyage, and he told the one of his jokes was when we left New York on the maiden voyage with a pair of rabbits and the ship was so fast that when we got to Le Havre, we still had two rabbits. Um, and then just the fact that so many passengers took the ship, whether you know, immigrating to this country from Europe and aboard the ship and, the, and just their stories of seeing the Statue of Liberty as the ship came into New York Harbor or meeting the, the loves of their lives on board. I mean, just the, the drama and the diversity and the you know the ship just just has uh, so many stories that I feel like even though I know a lot of them I feel like there's still so many more at least that that's part of the ship's legacy the, the impact she had on so many people and still has yeah um, absolutely and even from you know young kids who I've seen visit the ship where she currently is in Philadelphia blown away by by this this vision and and so yeah it, it's it's there's a timeless quality to her her grandeur and appeal so at the end of the ship's maiden voyage it was finally announced and calculated that the ship not only broke the speed record for the fastest transatlantic crossing but by a higher margin than any ship ever had before well my grandfather was so so proud that, he, that America, uh, his country, could compete against the European liners and not only compete, but prevail. So when the ship succeeded in taking the Blue Riband, that he had dreamed of this moment for 40 years. All right, everybody, that's the end of part one of this three-part series. Stay tuned next weekend for episode two. And I hope you enjoy Independence Day. <laughs>